The Science of Portion Control – How to Eat Less and Feel Full Offering large portions of high-energy dense, HED, foods increases overall intake in children and adults. This is known as the portion size effect, PSE. Over time, the PSE may facilitate overeating. There are limits to the PSE. It is not a simple dose-response relationship with a simple linear increase matched to large portions. According to a systematic review, the PSE appears to be weaker in children, women and individuals with overweight. These mixed results in adults may depend upon the types of foods offered. Many foods that are highly liked ahead including sweet snacks such as biscuits and cakes, or salty snacks including potato chips. In general, head foods tend to be more palatable than foods low in energy density, LED. Long-term effects of the portion size effect. If portion size is relevant to energy balance, then systematically increasing portion sizes could result in weight gain over time if there is no compensatory response to the excess energy intake. There are few controlled studies of long enough duration to determine the effects of the PSE on body weight. A creative, if obvious, solution to counter the PSE is to offer and to normalize smaller portion sizes at lunch since this appears to have helped consumers in the workplace investigation to defend against weight gain. Individual differences in portion size effect. Interestingly, when both portion size and energy density were manipulated, it was found that children with high food responsiveness demonstrated a greater PSE than those with low scores on this eating trait. This may provide an explanation, in part, for poor cognitive control around large portions of food. Portion distortion. They found that consumers typically underestimated the number of servings in a package. For example, most, 85%, identified a medium-sized pizza as a single serving rather than as a serving for two and for a large bar of chocolate consisting of eight servings. Most, 73%, estimated that it would provide four portions or fewer. Downsizing for children, starting with snacks. Portioning snacks from a family bag involves using small containers, measuring cups and scales, or subdividing large adult or family portions, buying pre-packaged individual snacks, using hand measurements to gauge child size portions and letting children determine portion size. Providing guidance to parents about portion size on packaging and labeling may benefit parents who rely on situational cues to determine the amount offered to children. A survey published by the Infant and Toddler Forum involving 1,000 UK parents found that 79% offer larger than recommended portions when serving meals, drinks and treats. It is important to understand the implications of adjusting portion sizes served to children and a pilot study is currently underway to investigate the feasibility and acceptability of two downsizing strategies. Reduction, whereby caregivers are instructed to reduce all head snacks by 50% and replacement which involves replacing all head snack with fruit and vegetables. Downsizing for children, dealing with meals. Varied the size of macaroni and cheese at lunch from 100 to 400 grams and found that offering smaller, age-appropriate portions of the main energy-dense meal item significantly increased intake of LED items such as green beans and unsweetened applesauce. Given that children are just beginning to establish eating habits, downsizing solutions may be acquired more quickly and easily than for adults, but this has yet to be tested. Social media has been promoted as a potential platform for behavior change interventions, and research has shown that a peer influence intervention may affect sexual health behavior and knowledge. 48. Packaging solutions for downsizing. However, package design and information on recommended portion size to promote healthy eating, particularly for children, provides another potentially important downsizing strategy. Given that the relative palatability of foods influences the PSE, simply offering large portions of LED items that are also nutrient-dense may not in itself encourage intake to improve dietary quality and lower overall energy intake. One implication of this proposal is that learning to like foods such as vegetables and fruit from childhood might encourage selection of these foods in greater proportions when offering downsized meal or snack items.
However, again the pivotal role of energy density is recognized since errors are greater for head foods that are highly appealing. Even if children learn to accept small portions of head items within a downsizing context, if these are eaten frequently, this will not result in a net benefit to their energy and nutrient intake. To lose weight, eat larger portions of LED foods and smaller portions of head foods. More salads, less burgers, you knew that. Thanks for watching. The American Nutrition Channel.